Hello, eighth graders. Um, I am setting up this video to try to explain to you how we are going to go through the content for my class. Um, I we don't have a textbook for science, so I have a an online textbook. It's an iBook that I have written. Um, and I have shared it with you under materials on the Google Classroom. It's called CODA's Geology iBook. And then you'll also notice that there is a CODA's Geology iBook answer sheet. This is a Google Doc where you will, throughout this unit, be answering your questions on the sheet um, that we have at the end of each chapter. Okay? So uh, let me just kind of show you the whole iBook. This is the cover here. You'll see this rocky background and you see a little pink shirt there. That's me standing against the rocky background um, looking at different kinds of rocks up by Ely, Minnesota. In this book we have five chapters. So we're going to start out with minerals, then we're going to talk about mineral identification, then rocks, the rock cycle, and then finally finding and mining ores, specifically in Minnesota. Okay, so we're just going to start right now. I'm going to start with the um, mineral chapter. Okay, so you guys have access to this um, this iBook. When I make these videos, you can you don't have to follow along in the book itself. You can just follow along on the video. Then you have the book as a resource to look back on. Okay, so I'll click on chapter one, minerals, and it starts out with a picture of a salt shaker. This is something that we're all used to seeing, um, and salt is actually a naturally occurring mineral. We process it in different ways to make it available for us to eat and shake out of a little shaker onto our cord on the cob in the summertime. Um, many of you have seen big salt blocks, maybe that you have um, if you're a hunter. Um, and if you go to places like Salt Lake City, in Utah, you will see that there is large um, deposits of salt there. Uh, we can actually use human means to evaporate the water out of salt water and harvest the salt. And then that's, that's how we get it. And then we bring it into processing in order for us to buy it in the grocery store. Okay. So what is a mineral? Well, a mineral is a solid material that forms by a natural process, okay? So there's all kinds of different things that we can make in a lab, human-made things, but an actual mineral is made naturally by the earth. It can be made up of an element or a compound. So you guys have all seen the periodic table of elements. Some minerals are just one element alone, um, like gold or silver or zinc, um, those, are, those are only made up of that one element. And some are compounds made of um, two or more elements. Um, each mineral has a specific chemical composition, so a specific recipe um, that has um, the amount of atoms of these elements within it. Um, the chemical composition for a mineral is different from other minerals. That's what makes it unique. It, each mineral has its own specific recipe of how many kinds of elements that make it up. Each mineral has physical properties that differ from others. So um, some minerals are harder than others. You know, some you can pick up and you can scratch with your fingernail. And then some, like diamond, um, is actually used to cut through really um, hard substances. Um, they have specific colors, they have um, d specific density, you know, you can hold two different minerals in your hand that look like they're the same size, but one will feel heavier because um, the, the atoms are more closely packed and there's actually more substance in them and so they're, they're more dense than the other. And then they also have a specific crystal structure and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, like I said before, minerals all form by natural processes. They are not made in a lab. Um, we can make some, like synthetic diamonds, we can make those in a lab, but it's not um, considered, considered an actual mineral. Um, they are all inorganic, meaning they're not made by living organisms. Like coal 
is made from the remains of old prehistoric living organisms. Um, a mineral is not. They're made from elements that we find within the earth. Um, so all minerals are inorganic, meaning not made from living stuff. All have a definite composition. So it says all minerals have a definite chemical makeup. A few minerals are made of only one kind of element, like silver is only made of silver atoms. Diamond and graphite are both made of only the element carbon. Um, and then some are made of compounds, like silicon dioxide is quartz. Quartz is a really common mineral that we find all over here in Minnesota. And each mineral has its own um, real specific recipe or compound. Um, each mineral has its own formula. Um, for example, the mineral hematite has two iron atoms for every three oxygen atoms. There might be other minerals that have iron and oxygen, but they don't have the specific ratio. Okay, so every mineral has its own real specific um, um, chemical formula or recipe. Minerals are solid. Okay, minerals must be solid. For example, ice and water are both made of H2O, right? But water wouldn't be considered a mineral. Ice, however, is because it's solid. It's naturally occurring. It's made from elements. It's inorganic. Um, so even though they're made of the same stuff, it has to be in a physical state that is solid. Um, some solids um, do not have any crystals within them, such as like glass or anybody who's played Minecraft knows what obsidian is. Um, they are not made of crystals, so they are not actually considered minerals. And I will show you some examples of all of these things. This is just kind of a quick overview. Um, the atoms of each of the minerals are arranged in a specific way. And this matters because how a mineral breaks definitely depends on how these atoms are arranged. This mineral right here is um, an example of how halite, which is salt, would be arranged. You can see that they are at 90 degree angles. And so if I smash this thing with a hammer, it's going to break apart in flat sheets. It's going to break apart right along where those atoms are bonded together. Whereas other elements that have kind of a random um, organization of its atoms, if I smash that with a hammer, they'll break off in just kind of random chunks. And we've, I'll show you some examples of that as well. Um, sometimes two different minerals can have the same chemical composition, but they are very different minerals because they have different crystal structures. Diamonds are very valuable gemstones because they are um, very, very hard and they're very pretty. Graphite, which is the lead in pencils, is not hard at all. Amazingly, they are both just made of carbon. Okay, so if you think of how much a pencil costs and how much a diamond costs, they're very, very different, right? Um, lead in a pencil is really, really soft. We can sharpen the pencil sharpener. We have to do that several times a day because it is so soft. And a diamond is actually used to cut very, very hard materials um, here on Earth. <clears throat> um, all of these physical properties, um, all of these physical properties come into play when we are identifying a mineral, when we are distinguishing one from the other. Um, so um, we are going to, the next chapter is talks about um, mineral identification and how we look at some of the physical properties between these two, between two different minerals in order to figure out exactly what the mineral's identification is. Um, I'm going to pause here just for a second because I want to introduce you to my new family member. This here, look at this, look at this girl. This is Niji. Niji is here. Let me make this big because you guys want to see her and not science. This is Niji. Um, she's our new puppy. Is she super cute? She's a little tired today <clears throat> because she was up all night long. She was up all night long. She was howling and partying, and now she's just going to sleep the day away.
Isn't she the cutest? This is her pink belly. I play it like a bongo. She's so cute. Okay, back to science. Oh, I have. I already have. Okay, so um, at the end of every chapter, we've got a little bit of vocabulary right there. Um, and we'll talk about all that vocabulary. This is just kind of an intro chapter to get you kind of used to the format of how I lecture through these things. And then at the end of every chapter, and this is the part that's going to take a little bit of practice. Um, at the end of every chapter, there is, underneath where it says questions, there's a video. There's always a little video down there. And the questions go mainly with the video, but also you may need to look back through the chapter as well, which is why I've given you access uh, to the iBook so that you can look back. But if you watch this video, you will be able to answer in this particular question or chapter, there's seven questions. Some of them only have one, some of them have two. Um, seven is a pretty high number, um, but there's just a lot of information in this chapter. And so you would watch this video and then these questions here are what you answer on your chapter one Google Doc, okay? So that is already posted on the Google Classroom. Um, here is that document, okay? So chapter one, minerals. There's seven spaces here. You would watch that video, answer the questions right here, and then you're not gonna turn it in until we are all the way done with chapter five. So I would say we'll probably be going through this iBook for about two weeks. And then I'll let you know when we're on chapter five and you answer that question, I'll tell you to turn in that document on Google Classroom and then we do the whole thing over again. The next unit, I'll have another iBook and I'll give you that, um, I'll give you that PDF that you can save and have access to and you'll get another Google Doc that has spaces to answer the questions. Okay, and these are just checking for understanding for um, everything that we go over in the book. Okay, well, I hope this makes sense to you. We will practice this a lot. Um, so if it's as clear as mud right now, you're probably in good company and we will just continue to walk through it together until it becomes second nature. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Say bye, Niji. Bye.